Welcome to the video where we're going to be working with the example where we are asked to compute the tenth derivative at zero of the given function arctangent of x squared over 3. This is a little bit unusual example, so let's pay attention. So we are asked to find tenth derivative. Technically speaking, you could just differentiate 10 times. We're using chain rule, the product probably is going to show up and so on and so on. But if you are asked to find 500th derivative, that's going to be a big problem. So people actually indeed use series to help out with the process. So we ask to find derivative at 0. But we know that f tenth derivative at 0 is part of the Maclaurin or Taylor series. They contain such derivative. So maybe it makes sense to find that kind of series for this function and then just calculate and then just identify the derivative there at the series. You don't even have to calculate it anymore. It's going to be there. So either you first uh, find the series for arctangent function. You can do it like we did an example before by actually evaluating the derivatives. We did it over here. First derivative, second derivative. We did it for the function called x plus 100 to raised to one half. But you can also look at the book. In the book, there is a formula for arctangent. Uh, arctangent has, uh, of course, a power series. That's a Maclaurin series, which is a sum minus 1 to the n x 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 from 0 to infinity. And this formula is will be used for this example. So like we did in the previous examples, the input in this formula is raised to the 2n plus 1 exponent. But now new input will be x squared plus 3. So now I don't call x x, I will call it input. And a new input will be x squared plus 3. Using this idea, I can write down that arc tangent of new input x squared plus 3 will be sum minus 1 to the n. And now instead of x, I will have x squared plus 3. Save all the parentheses, that's important. 2n plus 1 all over 2n plus 1. n is from 0 to infinity. Let's simplify now. That's where the exponents rule is going to happen right now. Remember those. I will rewrite the sum notation minus 1 to the n means this series is alternating, changing the sign. Now I will have x raised to 2 and then to the 2n plus 1. Make sense? And then 1 third, that just means we can put 3 to the denominator, but not just 3 as it is. It's going to be 2n plus 1 uh, on the top of the 3, right? Because it's 1 third raised to the 2n plus 1. Look at this exponent over here. And then there was 2n plus 1 in it at the denominator at the first place. So keep it there. Finally, sim uh, merge those two exponents, so negative 1 to the n, n is from 0 to infinity, and I'll write down coefficient separately and x separately. So I will write down over 3, 2n plus 1 times 2n plus 1, those are constants or coefficients. And then x is proudly standing uh, by itself, raised to the what? 2 times 2n plus 1, that's going to be 4n plus 2 multiplied. So I'm multiplying those two exponents based on the properties of the exponents. And that is my intermediate answer. Right now I found the series for the arctangent I was provided. Using the formula for the arctangent we knew, arctangent x. Okay, it doesn't really seem to be easy because I don't see where is my tenth derivative here. Hmm, doesn't really make sense. So, what we're going to do, we're going to uh, remember what is the formula for the Taylor series. Or in this case, it's actually Maclaurin series because we're talking about derivatives at zero. So, for the Maclaurin series, we are working with the any kind of function. And any kind of function will have a series with the formula there f n well it's called m because n is already reserved for this first series so m's derivative at zero so remember in general case it's actually x uh, it's actually a 
So we're finding these derivatives at A. That's Taylor series. But if A is zero, then it's Maclaurin series. Over M factorial, and then it's going to be X to the M. Uh, it used to be N, but I changed it to M. Does it matter? From zero to infinity, right? And then for Taylor, it's X minus A, if you remember. Then it's going to be a shift by center, but A is zero. So this is my, uh, let's put it in a very bright red box. This is my Maclaurin series formula. So it's Taylor at A equals zero, or we also call it Maclaurin uh, series. Um, and of course, as always, I forgot how to write down Maclaurin in English. M-A-C-L-A-U-R-I-N. Yes. Never mind. McLaurin series or Taylor is zero. So that's the formula. And now let's compare. What do we have and what do we need? So as you can see, now it's pretty visual. X is my input. X is my input. We used to have X to the M. Now we have X to the 4N plus 2. These are the coefficients I will try to match. Why? What are we looking for? We're looking for this part. There is an M's derivative hidden in our case. But where is it? M's derivative is there. We just need to solve for it. And then we don't need M's derivative at zero. We actually need particularly 10's derivative at zero. Remember that? So it's very interesting. I will set those two things equal to each other because I know that they should be equal based on the formula because those things are the same. It's just the top series is a series for the particular function arctangent x squared over 3. The bottom series is a series for general function. They equal to each other for, par for particular coefficients cn's. What are the particular coefficients cn's? Here they are cn. Well, at the bottom, I can call it cn. So this is my cm. And at the top, it's not actually cm. It's c sub 4n plus 2 because the counter should match m over here x raised to the m divided by the m factorial and also taking a m's derivative where m is the counter from 0 to infinity in our case it is c 4n plus 2 x raised to the 4n plus 2 divided by the 4n plus well, actually, that's already not important. That's actually already part of the formula. So that's not important. But n is included, oops, n is included into the formula. So 2n plus 1 is there, negative 1 to the n, 3 is raised to the 2n plus 1, and n is from 0 to infinity. That's how we're going to do it. So let's write down this equation what kind of equation look at the blue circle ellipse minus 1 to the n all over 3 2 n plus 1 2 n plus 1 is equal to and now let's see so we could write down uh, m's derivative over m factorial, but then it's not going to match our case. In our case, it should be m, so this m over here. This m is 4n plus 2. This is why I wrote this explanation. C 4n plus 2 should be the same as C M. That means M should be 4n plus 2 because those things are the same. Does it make sense? They're equal to each other. So it's going to be 4, so it's going to be F, which kind of derivative? 4n plus 2, and I don't need actually, well, I will keep the red color for you, over 4n plus 2 factorial at 0. And now we just need to solve this equation. So m is 4n plus 2. Put this in the box to make this good note what just happened, of what just happened over here. And now we're just solving this equation. We need to solve for what? Do you remember what we're looking for? 
We are looking for the derivative. So we are solving for this. This is my unknown. So again, this equality happened because, because C4n plus 2 is given in two forms. C4n plus 2 is um, part of the expansion we just found for the particular arctangent. And C4n plus 2 is part of the general ex expansion, uh, which is usually just C sub n. But if I plug C4n plus 2, it still works. So it's just part of this formula and this expansion we found. That's why those things are equal to each other. Looking for the derivative. So I'm solving for the yellow part. That means I'm just going to multiply by 4n plus 2 factorial left hand side and right hand side. Then, and then derivative 4n plus 2 derivative at 0 is going to be minus 1 to the n times 4n plus 2 all over 3 to n plus 1 times 2n plus 1. So I'm solving for the derivative. Why I'm doing this? Because now with this formula, to be honest, this is a magical formula, I can find any derivative I need. Not only tens, but any. So for example, the asteroid is uh, uh, going towards the Earth and you need to figure out what is the speed, acceleration, jump, um, pop, check all those kind of derivatives if you know the distance. So you can find any derivative you want from here. So this is actually a pretty important formula. And this is a very common research done to find the formula for the derivative because now you can answer lots of questions from it. If tens derivative represents some kind of super acceleration of the speed of light, blah, 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 then that's why you're looking for it. And now we can do it. To find tens derivative at zero, I just understand that n will be two. How do I know? Who can answer this question because 4n plus 2 is 0 right uh, not 0 10 if you solve this n is 2 make sense so I need this to be 10 and 10's derivative so n is 2 now we know that now let's plug 2 plug n equals 2 to the right hand side and we're almost done minus 1 squared then it's going to be 10 oh i'm lost factorial yes see this factorial over here it should go here factorial 10 so n is uh, equals to so it's going to be 10 factorial underneath parentheses 10 factorial all over then it's going to be 3 2 times 2 plus 1 times 2 times 2 plus 1. Carefully calculating this. Negative 1 squared is positive. So it's going to be 10 factorial all over 3 raised to the 5, right? 3 to the 5 times 5. You can simplify that more or you can answer approximately. It is approximately 2,900. 86.66667 and moreover you can actually learn, uh, find other derivatives as well if you want using this formula in yellow hopefully it made sense because this problem is indeed pretty confusing but the idea is the main idea is coming from those two boxes with the check marks this one and this one the first box represents the expansion we found for the particular function arctangent of x squared over 3. The second box is the, the general formula for Taylor or Maclaurin series. Now, we know that the general formula involves m's derivatives there. So this m's derivative is hidden somewhere for these coefficients cn's. We can put an equal sign between these two types of coefficients if we match the counter. The general counter is m, but our counter is 4n plus 2. So m will be 4n plus 2. That means I'm gonna plug or substitute 4n plus 2 everywhere into the general formula coefficient for coefficients. Put the equal sign between these two. 
Now we can solve for the derivative and then find any derivative we asked to find. Hopefully it made sense and I will see you in my next video. Thank you for watching.